So, here's what's going to happen. We already decided before you yeah. come. You're going to ship GNOME 3.5? No. Yeah. Yeah. We said we are going to ship KDE by default this cycle. <laughs> that would also be fine. I mean, if you want to like aim for a minimum amount of disruption, that could be the way to go. Yeah. So, like, as soon as they branch for stable, you got to like, you know, start going with the master branch. <laughs> like, get snapshots and stuff. Yeah. Did you build, like, if I commit, build and push to the archive? Well, and I'm thinking that, like, you actually should merge some feature branches that, like... <laughs> Before they get even tested. Yeah, we're going to double the number of patches we have. <coughs> you actually, like... <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We're actually going to just accept every merge of this as well. It's going to be known. It's going to be well, I mean, you got to be supporting this for a long time, so you want to make sure that it's got all the new stuff in it, right? Because <laughs> you don't want to be using the old stuff. We're going to be five years ahead from day one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Let me open the card. Are you the nobody, chair? Nobody wants to sit there, or...? <coughs> I'm going to move out of the way if like, someone more interesting comes along. <coughs> We're missing Martin, probably. No, he's not but coming, Martin. I know. He has another session at the same hey, time. Jeremy. Hi. Hey. Rodrigo. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Mm. So who else is missing? Nobody. Uh, I think we can start. I'm just trying to get in the park. Okay. Like, I got disconnected. So, let's start. Starting with the platform side, GDB and GTK. Obviously, 3.4. Can you just make a summary of the changes coming this cycle? Um. Okay, uh, so, so far there was all the threading stuff that's already landed. Um, uh, Rico's been running it for a while on Ubuntu, and I think all of the bugs have been fixed, except this EOG thing, which there's a very simple, and like the problem is fully understood, and that can be patched. Um, there could be some main loop improvements, uh, adding microsecond accurate time, uh, finishing the transition to monotonic absolute time. Uh, there could be ePoll support landing, uh, if we get time. Um, the gmenu model stuff, uh, which is probably going to be necessary for, uh, for things that the DX team wants to do. Um, I was planning on doing some G-setting stuff, uh, this like plugin support. Uh, lots of people have been asking for that. Maybe uh, change the G-settings backend interface, uh, which would require that you bump dconf at the same time. Yeah. So would GTK modules become GTK plugins? Like, would they be two separate things, or would they be getting rid of modules and making them plugins? Uh, we don't have any plans to change that, as far as I know. Okay. And the G settings plugins, what, what kind of plugins? G settings. Oh, oh. So the G settings backend interface is just how G settings talks to Dconf. And um, it, it's always been advertised as something that's not part of our API stability guarantees. And there's a couple of things that are preventing us from implementing new features, so we want to make some small incompatible tweaks. So it'll require just, you know, doing a lockstep transition on the upgrade. We need to support the other backends in the bunch of tools. No. It's already on default. Yeah, all the other backends, like the Windows backend, is it's in tree anyway, so. Yeah. So, do you see any of those changes being risky or likely to come to light, or is that like mostly? work already being done and reviewed and which yeah. can land early in the cycle? Some of it is being done and reviewed, others needs to be started. Um, it needs like, you know, the, the like switching to ePool thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I see that as like really not that important. Um, it, it, you know, it's cool, but it's not really buying us a lot in terms of the API. I could see that getting punted, for example. Um, the other things are relatively minor, I'd say. Uh, like no huge like engineering undertakings there, so I don't see too much risk of disruption, and a lot of it will be like just new features, so things would have to use it for it to become an issue. Yeah, so I would say like go with a new version for Julie. It's always good to have the current platform. It's not doesn't seem too risky. Like in the new stuff are coming, but nothing is going to use us, so it's not going to be an issue like for the platform this cycle. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who is like thinks it's not a good idea? To go with a new GDB? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Sorry, I, I didn't hear, hear quite the end of that. You, a good idea to what? Not a uh, good idea not to go with new glib. Like new glib. new glib. New glib. Okay, nothing specific on that. Ah. Uh, do you know what's coming in GTK this cycle? Um, so kinetic scrolling will land, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> as will multi-touch support. That's probably going to be interesting uh, because Chase obviously has some different ideas on how multi-touch should work, and mm -hmm. that's that's been integrated completely differently. Um, we, I, I hate that my only intervention in this conversation would be of this nature, but we would want to express the set of APIs that Chase has worked on. I think we've approached people in good faith on that basis, and regardless the outcome would be that we would want to have consistent APIs across various toolkits. So I think the problem might be that the GNOME applications will be using the APIs that are in GTK. Um, the, you know, we would have to have hard conversations about whether we would expose those APIs on Ubuntu. Uh, can, can you elaborate what that means a little more? Yeah, where we've set out to design and create a bunch of APIs. We want to make those APIs consistently available across all applications and all toolkits on the platform. So we would want to expose similar APIs through the browser and JavaScript, for example, similar APIs to GTK developers, similar APIs to, to Qt developers. We've had very constructive engagements you know, on the browser front and on the Qt front. It's been very straightforward. On the GTK front, you know, it's, you know, we know what we're committed to delivering and we would hope we could get that outcome easily, but if we can't get it easily, we'll get it anyway. So it's my understanding that uh, Carlos Granacho was supposed to be contracted by Canonical like as much as one year ago. I was told that that was gonna happen and it didn't happen, and he's the one that just went ahead and did it on his own now. So I'm not going to get into the background. There was a go-ahead to, 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 to do that engagement through contracting. It, it, it didn't happen, but as to exactly why it happened, that's not, uh, it's not something I'm going to go into here. Nevertheless, you know, our, our engagement very clearly in good faith was to get a clear set of APIs that was the APIs that we put work into exposed, and the failure to do that regardless means that we'll have to push the set of APIs that we want on Ubuntu. Okay. Um, so is there plans to do like lots of porting of applications from the GTK APIs to use your APIs? No. My understanding on this was that there's a, there was a, a resistance to the set of APIs that we proposed because Utouch is a canonical project with a contribution agreement. That, that was the sole reason given for the divergence. Do you have like a reference get. to a discussion that I can look at? Not a public conversation, no. And the, did the com who did the conversation happen between? Uh, folks on the Utouch team and other folks. Anyway, get, getting into that is not relevant. <laughs> what is relevant? Well, it is, is because I'm wondering, like, from a GTK standpoint, why aren't we using this? Because I've never seen this discussion. Right. What 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 is relevant is that we did all of this work around APIs, we want to expose those APIs, we're quite happy to work with toolkit vendors, we don't need assignment on the toolkit pieces, but, you know, we've had good engagements with the cute guys around exactly this process, and we haven't got a good result yet around GTK. And My understanding is that on our side, we've sort of been waiting for you guys to show up. Okay, that well, there was supposed to be... Why don't we take okay. this out of band? But, sure. You know, it's certainly not a question of a lack of resources on our side or a lack of willingness to contract somebody. I believe the decision was, a, was taken on the other side because of a fear of creating a dependency on a canonical uh, contribution agreement code base. And I don't think that's sufficient justification for us to then end up having divergent APIs. And as for app vendors, I prefer them not to have to make that choice. But if they have to make a choice, so be it. Okay. Um, so those are the two biggest changes I know about. Okay. I guess the first one, like kinetic scrolling, is not an issue. Yeah, I think it's it's not particularly tied to the way that multi-touch mm -hmm. is done. I think it's just the kind of thing like if you grab it with the mouse and flick it, it's going to go, okay. which is basically like you know touchscreen functionality there. Um, there will also be uh, some of the menu integration work being done, uh, so it's something that you're going to want to take for that, I think. 
Uh, I'm not familiar uh, too much with what people are hacking on there. I guess there's going to be a lot of accessibility improvements, actually. I know there's been a lot of focus on that area lately. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff broke up and refactor, so... Yeah, I'm not surprised. They, they sort of, um, I think they've, they've uh, gotten a little bit uh, sick of just like, you know, putting more patches on top of the stack that's slowly spiraling out of control from their yeah. point of view, and they just want to like hack and slash for a bit. Yeah, I know, I know they want to drop ATK and just do a talk direct DBUS over at Adsby, so, well, that's what Benjamin Otto wants to do. That's probably not just going to GTK 3, 4, but it's been talked about. I, I think it's something that he wants to do like soon, like within GTK 3. And I think right. uh, he needs to talk to the accessibility people in GNOME because... Yeah, he's already talking to them about it. They're, they're going to have a hack fest in January where they all get in the same kind of room yeah. and butt heads because I think he has a really a, a limited idea of the scope that's yep. needed for some accessibility yep. technologies. So they just need to, you know, gnash that out between them. Yeah. So would it be reasonable to say that this is essentially a... a, a, a a polish and improvement cycle for GNOME. There are no, there are no um, disruptive changes. I, I wouldn't say that's entirely true. No, I, I'd say there are new feature additions. Uh, we have plans to like have new applications, new features, and applications, uh, like the menu code. Uh, no, no, no. But I mean, example. from an infrastructure point of view, the there, there were some disruptive changes in glib uh, that I was talking before you entered the room. Um, just sort of draining the swamp kind of stuff that needed to be cleaned up right. drastically. Um, but that's done already, mostly. Yeah, and it, it... Low risk, essentially. Yeah, yeah it's, already, it's already stable, like, as we're talking. People are using it. Um, at, at a different level, has there been any discussion within GNOME about an <coughs> LTS-like metacycle on top of the six-month cadence? Uh, you mean like like when do we do 4.0 kind of discussions? Yeah. Or? Is there any has there been any discussion about about essentially an LTS cycle on top of the six month cycle? The six month cycle has worked very well between <coughs> between uh, you know Ubuntu and GNOME and now Ubuntu and Fedora and GNOME. And I so wonder whether there's any interest in essentially looking at the. This is actually very interesting. Well. Uh, uh, thing that you bring up because we had this uh, this distro mini thing in Gnome.asia in India uh, and Debian was there and uh, like Fedora was there and Sisu was there. Uh, I was there sort of kind of vaguely representing Canonical as a contractor at least and something that came up is that uh, distros want to be able to like like you know ship a product for a long time based on even 2.x so you know you're supporting it. And there's going to be... Uh, it turns out users want that too. Yeah. I keep hearing. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're a corporate user, then you're not going to be like upgrading every year. Like, like running Fedora is like a non-starter. Because um, that's like every year you have to reinstall the thing. So what, what we hear is that that's desired. And that it, it just turned out that like there was some version of GNOME, like .24, .28 or something, that ended up by luck that a lot of people were doing long-term support based on this thing, and it was like, hey, since we just happen to have like this lock-in on here, is there a way we could share patches with each other? Since like upstream is like, you know, plowing ahead, we need to maintain this stuff. How can we communicate better on that? Um, so they came up with like some really loose ideas about like better communication and stuff like that, but I didn't feel that it had like a really solid outcome. Um, that, that would be a really interesting discussion to have, in my opinion. So a couple... The six-month cadence has become quite popular. I mean, the kernel's on a three-month cadence, but that's essentially a tick-tock. Yeah, and then you have these crazy browser guys that are like six-week cadence. Um, but, for example, the OpenStack guys have started wanting to raise the idea of an LTS cycle and doing the two years. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, because uh, if the distros can share... It makes it much easier. Like, hey, we got a cool patch that's fixing this problem that's bothering everybody. That's worth sharing. Debian has committed to trying a time-based freeze, which is close enough, right? It, uh, I'm not familiar. Time-based freeze would just mean that they would be freezing on the same thing. They're not committing to this to, to a release date a certain amount after the freeze. You know, we right. freeze, and then three months later, or whatever it is, we release. Whereas they might take longer to release, but we could freeze at the same time. It means we're essentially looking at the same versions. It's a version selection issue. I think uh, the, the way Fedora does it, since we're talking about this, is actually pretty interesting too. They have a schedule, but they allow it to slip. They have like a series of go-no-go -no -go meetings like 
before they release the alpha, go, no, go. And if they decide to go, they stick the schedule. And if they decide no go, then everything in the schedule from that point on moves back a week. So like all of the deadlines are adjusted accordingly. Mm. So it's just another similar way of doing things like that. I mean, what would the appropriate forum be to start thinking about LTSing? Uh, I think we have at least one distro mail list. I think it's yeah. something that is, it's definitely something that is more interesting to the people being in charge of the distribution than like people like me who just do it for fun. You know? Advisory board is also <coughs> not a bad place, I think. Mm. Or even the GNOME developers that are working on the... Oh yeah, the definitely. On the um, but yeah, yeah, I think like GNOME advisory board would be a good forum for bringing... I, I, I don't see this as like a, an exceptional amount of effort. Um, on the part of GNOME either. It's just like, okay, uh, this release is going to be the one that we think you should standardize on. And it might make sense to sort of backwards sync up with you guys since you have the most established schedule with respect to that. But I'm sure, you know, Red Hat might have some opinions right, about exactly. that. Right, exactly. I mean, where, where this ultimately leads to is the spreading of the sort of LTS gravity well across distros. Mm. What that means is you get that patch sharing across all of the upstreams in all of the distros. So I think it's a very powerful, I think it's going to happen and I think it's very powerful. The only real question is how we can precipitate it and, and, and accelerate it. And there will inevitably be a bit of jostling as to whose cadence or which cadence we come on to. What I would say in that regard is um, you, have to, you pretty much have to do a whole year because if you do a half year then things like your big conferences are different portions in the cycle. Well, I think a two-year cycle might be pretty reasonable. That's what you guys are doing now. We, right? Yeah, we came to that. Three years is... Soft, software guys want a longer cycle, hardware guys want a shorter cycle, and two years is in the middle. So it's sort of, that's how it shakes out. We would adjust our two-year cycle to fit in with a bunch of other distros on a two-year cycle. You know, it's not like we're prissy about what... Okay, so um, what I recommend is you talk to... Um, you talk to Rick and you talk to Jason and brief them on what you need. And I think this should go on the schedule at the next advisory board meeting because like all of the other big districts are on the advisory board and I think that's a pretty good place to discuss Useful. this. Right. Thanks. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take up the, the touch question with you and Chase. Yeah, I kind of wondered what happened. You may be able to, to <coughs> offer some insight. Cool. Okay. So new GTK, thumbs up. So we need to get the Touch issue like resolve before we go for the new version. Right. Been, if but if, if the menu stuff is depending on the new, well, I guess you could backport the new APIs because it's purely additive. Yeah. <sighs> right. And if you don't ship GTK, you can't ship any apps because they're all going to, you know, they all pick up something or other. <laughs> um, and I, I think you're going to want to because um, what I think will happen is when this menu stuff lands, you're going to get an app like Gedit that's always like running out there, like new API, let's use it. And I think Robert wants to port some stuff as well, like in the games, uh, you know, fitting in with yeah. the application menu design. Uh, and I think, I think from the standpoint of like this is technology that Canonical developed, it would be really good to showcase it in Ubuntu. Yeah, so we get like work to done either way. Is we like around the touch support to 3.4, or we backport like the g stuff to 3.2. Yeah, I, I'm going to talk to Mark and figure out like what went wrong there. And I might want to join this discussion, but like... And I, I did talk to Chase, and Chase seems to think that it's not that bad, that yeah. there's still room for like hooking things up in a reasonable way. Mm -hmm. So did it could not be a disaster at all. Did stuff land yet? Or? No, feature branches. Oh, okay, right. But like, like undergoing like last rounds or review mm. kind of thing, mm. it's, it's really definitely yeah, in okay, the cycle. Okay. Yeah. And probably like I'd say within like the next, like probably by the end of the year. It's right, 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 right. And thank God because that's like both of those are pretty embarrassing that we don't have it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm putting an item like decision pending and like all you result like the multi touch. And so when we say glib, we also include gvfs, glib networking, dconf. No. No. So gvfs, uh, David is writing new disk to use this too, and Martin said this is too big of a challenge for LTS. And David doesn't plan to get like both backend upstream. He said it's either the new version or nothing. 
and we don't want to write lambda you will write this cycle for like gvfs gnome disk utility and so mismatched gvfs and glib yes okay I, I think that's okay as long as david doesn't decide he wants to make things more interesting and by interesting i mean bad but it, is there anything we should or could do like in a proactive way to check like that's going to work and that well I'll just keep building it and make sure it works but if and maybe talk to David and register your concerns. I will ask Martin to talk with David. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Be because in theory, the, the idea is you can upgrade your glib and leave your gvfs behind, and it should work. Yeah. But it's one of these things, just like the deconf API, that it's sort of like a, you know, it's like okay, well, it only really has one consumer, so if we want to break it, it's not that bad. Yeah. Okay. So I want to take so I want to take a moment and answer NM Linker's uh, questions here. Uh, the first one is about GNOME's uh, if we're going to get uh, a quick like quick list like feature in the uh, shell. And <clears throat> I think our current focus is on application menus. Um, I should be able to provide a URL if someone has a laptop. Um, and I think like quick lists are, they won't happen for 3.4, but there has definitely been discussions about them, uh, basically to add more stuff to uh, our current right click menus. Can uh, you pull up the wiki page? Yeah. What? Will you pull up the wiki page? Yeah. Yeah, a, it up on. The other issue is the items from administration and preferences menu. That, that would be a Ubuntu bug, I guess. Yeah, that sounds very much like a Ubuntu bug. Um, uh, how GNOME fallback is working in the GNOME menus, so we'll just have to look at that more. Sir, can I steal your monitor? This cycle, I guess. What? Just for a second, can I steal your monitor? Yes, it, it sounds like bugs. Um, file a bug. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe there's already a bug on that. Okay. We'll just have to right. make that a priority that we figure out what's going on there. So as designed, um, uh, we're going to have menus in GNOME that work like this. So we're taking that menu at the top of the shell that really does nothing <laughs> and putting this kind of stuff in it, which is kind of like a quick list in some ways, uh, but behaving also more like a menu and that you can have like radio buttons and stuff like that in it. Uh, I think something that you're going to have to be cognizant of is that GNOME applications are going to start doing this. And then you're going to have to decide how that integrates with Unity's global menu bar. Um, so you know, the question where, in this case, is pretty simple, right? You have, um, you have the document uh, window that doesn't have a menu in itself, and it just puts this up here. So the thing to do in that case is kind of obvious. You put, like, documents in the top instead of the full menu, I guess. Uh, what gets more interesting is, like, when they do this, but also do this. And you're going to see this in complicated apps like GIMP and Inkscape and so on. Um, and then the question is, like, OK, uh, so we have, like, two different menus, and I think Probably the most reasonable thing is you keep this one here, and then like you put beside it like file, edit, view, whatever. Similar to MacOS 10, I guess. Yeah, quite a, quite similar. Yeah. I think. Uh, add menu. Hmm. We have menu. If you go back to future. Yeah. Uh, like here. Yeah. Uh, uh, just add add menu. It should be after that the He's saying help menus. Help me. Oh, sorry. Is there such a entry you have to know? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Find the staff and organization. Yeah. I don't know if it could be problematic for government and unity. I don't know either, and we're having a discussion of how it's going to fit in with the application menu in GNOME. Um, mm. I heard an idea proposed that one of the items on the application menu could be help, and when you click on it, the menu transforms into the searchable help menu. I'm not sure like how the GNOME designers will think this is a good idea, or it, it's really an open discussion. And if if I were to like just make a guess, I'd say that this is probably not going to happen this cycle, just because there's too many questions. It seems just a little bit I've been reading. It seems like Sean's proposing this, and GTK doesn't seem very interested in it yet. At least I, I think there's too much uncertainty about how it's actually going to work. Okay. Um, He's looking for a sponsor, kind of, I guess, for them yeah. to say it. We'll it's like the it's the age old issue of like you know people aren't that excited about help. 
I, like I hate to say it, but it's okay. true. That's that's just generally the pushback I think he's getting. It's almost like the fact that we need help is a little bit embarrassing or something, and we should just try and make great user interfaces that don't. Or I don't know. Yeah, in like a very, very, very perfect world, we would not need documentation. But of course, <laughs> that perfect world is. A so long I, way I think away. he's getting this like you know kind of like I accidentally hit F1 and Yelp opened again. Like I'm really annoyed. I wanted escape and like stupid help window popping up all the time. Which is not like you know this is developers right not necessarily it's best for the users. I think I think he probably just needs to touch base with the design people and mm -hmm. and convince them that he's got a great idea. Okay. So I'll give you back Seb. Yeah. Um, also with with that app menu thing, I was thinking that that is more similar to Unity's um, uh, quick list feature. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Sli slightly. Oh, so you, you would shove it <coughs> in the... That app menu thing that you just showed, I thought it was more a quick list type thing. It, I think it is, but, but I think the items in there aren't really appropriate to be put in a quick list. Like quick list work when the application is not running. This only works when the application is running. Mm, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's oh, quite okay. a difference there. But, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and as I said earlier, we might do some kind of quick list thing as well at some point. But it's up in the air. I yeah, would say. I will take an action item to discuss with design and JFs like integration. What to do here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you want to talk about apps at all? I mean, it seems like we're still uncertain about GTK, and if we don't have new GTK, it's going to be impossible to talk about apps. Any other platformy bits? So, I would say by default, stay behind on Street Dot Two. Like. We better spend our cycle fixing bugs and trying to catch up with new version. Are we gonna upgrade some? But we might want to upgrade some component. So maybe if anybody wants to put a component <coughs> on the upgrade list now, raise it now, so we can like discuss and see which one we take and which one we don't take. I think the games might be a reasonable choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, part of that reason is because Robert's in this room. <laughs> Another part of that reason is because like they don't touch a lot of stuff and are unlikely to break. And the third part of that reason is Robert said that he's going to look at the menu stuff. Like we might even like go off and hack on that tonight, and that could serve as like a useful showcase of like the work that Canonical has invested in that area. Yeah. Uh, and another thing I'd say, if they do pick it up, could be like key edit as well if they decide to go that way. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the two that sort of come into my mind. Yeah, yeah, I have GNOME. Also, well, I have GNOME might be like landing the touch stuff upstream because they got that patch last cycle that was very well received. Check <laughs> <laughs> will be another very long controversial. So, um, I mean, like currently, events, events oh. could be pretty safe, I guess. Super scary. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying. Sorry. So, for the the current um, stable Ubuntu release, I think there are a bunch of applications like. Totem that is only 3.0 right now. Yeah. That would move to 3.2 or 3.4. No, no because no, it's so, so we don't want to use Clutter because it's like taking up space on the CD. No, it's not And now not we're hanging on non-accelerated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's creating like issues on some drivers and ah. didn't get tested on ARM and it's too risky right. for HS cycle. That's yeah, that's a tricky issue in general because it's like definitely I see more and more applications mm -hmm. moving. So let's talk control center. It yeah. sounds like you plan on doing a lot of work in the control center yeah. that's necessary and getting it done upstream, yeah. which would imply to me that you're going to have to ship the new control center. Yeah. And that, that's a big one. And that's like a risky one, possibly. I would say like Odego is going to spend enough, enough time on it to make sure like is a, the new version can work on that too. Or yeah. if it doesn't, we have like the capacity to backport what we need and like. And it, it, having like a guy who's focused on like the Ubuntu release cycle, specifically working on Control Center, sort of it makes the risk more manageable as well. Yeah. Mm. Sort of that is like epiphany. Epiphany. Uh, okay. Telepathy and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what's going to happen to cycle with empathy? empathy? Well, they're going to uh, require clutter. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Are there any fixes that we want that we've missed out on? Huh? Are we going to miss out on anything that we want? Um, well, the better call. Yeah. yeah. But 
So that's what about the worst case scenario, though, I mean, if we do have clutter, it's not going to break. Your whole system is just going to be calls might not be as good. Yeah, I was going to but, say yeah. video playing is a big issue. You don't want to break video playing. Yeah. Looking like calls yeah, in a party for some years. Maybe the it's video not, video not as good or something like that. You know, it's not a yeah. What do you say about um, about the application, like the new ones that are getting done, like the contacts, the documents? I think everything which is not in the CD is fine to update. Like so like the shell and everything as well yeah. gets upgraded? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How is uh, Sushi doing? Is that getting in or...? Uh, I think it's on the it's agenda another. for the different application now, at 5 o'clock today. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's to, if it's been packaged. It's yes, it's it's packaged. Packaged. Right, right. Okay, good. So I guess you plan to keep the old Nautilus as another big, hairy yeah. one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there are a couple of interesting improvements I've heard of there. Um, one interesting feature is they have this, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's something like unattended. It's, um, it's when you uh, go and you copy some files to like another folder, and it's going, 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 and you walk away from your computer, and then you come back to your computer, and you see that it like stopped at like 3% because there's like some okay. file that you have to mm -hmm. choose to replace it. So they're gonna like, uh, I think, start working on a feature that um, it like continues to do the operation and just like leaves the nice. questions until the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's, I think that's one of those trade-off we need to make in LTS, like it's going yeah. to be there next cycle. Yeah. We have been like, living without it for like until now. We can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. another cycle. I know how not to do a UI for that feature. <laughs> if you saw that. Katie had an interesting uh, solution. With like popping up like a hundred windows? No, no, no. <laughs> you, would, wow. you would want to see it. It was a bit complex. <clears throat> uh, what else? Oh, um... Yeah, what else? Well, just since we're talking about GNOME's release cycle, um, I'm curious about boxes. Is that something that's going to see some real code this cycle? I don't know. It's got real code. Indeed. Okay. I'm not sure what they're doing right now. I don't know. Something that I do know is that people at Red Hat seem to care a lot about virtualization recently. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's like kind of a priority for them. I think Susan and and Mark and Ray might be working on it currently. I I think so. I, I can't swear on it, but I think there are. So at least two engineers currently implementing it. Or if it was like something else, they would. Yeah. I think that don't take on its own gun unboxes on did so. Oh, okay, so, so they are sort, definitely implementing not sure it. Who, but All right, right, right. Some yeah, people I, are working on it. So. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So it's happening. How about like gnome shell like game greeter? What about it? Hmm? Let's shift it. On the CD. No, I mean like in the archive if it exists. It works, sure. It could be pretty cool. Um, when, when, is, uh, when are they ever going to turn on extensions.gnome.org? I mean, you know, they say, you yeah. know, don't bother us about it, we'll get to it eventually, but. It almost happened during 3.2, uh, yep. but it wasn't <coughs> quite there. Um, These are shell extensions? Yeah, mm -hmm. which you enable through a website, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. Yeah, you just turn them on and off because uh, pa nice. packaging them through a distribution doesn't really scale. Yeah, so uh, there's got like 40 of them. But I know, crazy. it's crazy. Um, so uh, I, I think that would happen during 3.4. It um, was implementing them. Yeah, I'm well, not the sure. plugin already exists as yeah. part of GNOME Shell. Um, I just I always go visit the website to see is it up yet? Uh, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I, th th I think it works like later. really close life cycle, and then I would I would actually be surprised if it didn't didn't happen during three point four. Because okay. uh, like on Debian's De Debian didn't package it. I think the main thing was is the installing it would install it for everybody by default. Uh huh. And. So we're on a multi-user system, that's not how you want to do it, but I, I was thinking that this extension store would be, uh, would be a better thing to do it more per user easily. And, oh yeah. They are available to all users because there is no way to disable extensions, right? Um, well, yeah. yeah the, there's by, no UI to... Yeah, there was no, there was no UI to um, more selectively enable mm -hmm. it when you install. 
Because I'm, I'm not sure the extensions thing is... Uh, because I, I guess you download the extensions and they get installed on the user's home directory? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Is that a good idea? Because I, I think like Firefox is moving and Thunderbird, they are moving away from that or...? It's no, a, we're not. <laughs> it's, it's a plugin, so it can cheat. It doesn't have the normal problem with um, extensions having to be updated every six weeks. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. But then there should be a way to auto-update the, the extensions that they use. That, that's up to the application developer. Okay. If you want extensions, then you should provide a yeah, we do. That's a side topic, maybe. Let's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Evolution, I would say, like, stay behind the cycle. Yeah, do. Well, EDS is, is a more interesting question. Yeah. As a thing, but EDS is changing a lot the API, and, and, and evolution is getting a lot of of changes. So yeah, yeah there's like G settings, WebKit going in the same cycle. Yeah. Plus uh, account dialog. Like being a factor, and it? like G settings is like causing all these aborts as well, so you have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. KS Cloud asked if it was a go ahead for GTK 3.4. Uh, for GTK 3.4, <coughs> there are some issues that we have to investigate uh, with respect to compatibility with UTouch before that decision gets made. Now, of course, if GTK 3.4 is held back. Uh, our plans to like integrate new GNOME applications come to a grinding halt. Uh, so it might be the case that we ship it, but then figure out how to make it work with UTouch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was uh, was the WebKit version on the agenda then? Uh, Is that for the session or a different one? Yeah, we can discuss for a bit. Mm. I would say it's part of the platform, go for the new version. Yeah. 1.8 then? I yeah. This. yeah. We have 1.6 now, no? Um, I, I package it, I need a sponsor and someone else to look at it, but yeah. From an accessibility point of view, the latest web kit just came with very nice. There's always accessibility bug fixes in front of a new web kit GTK release. But if you've got a whole bag, that's fine too. Has it been decided when that A will still support the A2? I don't know. <coughs> Maybe we should check that. Because uh, we need to support this ourselves. We wouldn't want to have the latest web kit that does support the A2. So we'll be backwarding that to the rest of our. What are we, what are we still need with the GTK2 for? Ubiquity has been ported. Um, because we'll be assuming maintenance of it. No, 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 but what do we still have in main? That's Banshee? Oh, oh. yeah, no, Banshee. And Dumbo, well, no? Can we switch to Beatbox? <laughs> no. <laughs> but actually, isn't... That's... I wonder how, how far away uh, Banshee GTK3 is. Yeah, we don't want to write a uh, lender provide with new bindings, like for LTS. It's like... Like GTK sharp bindings based on G-object introspection are like... Not that awesome yet. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, I I see why you would like to ship to give two of them. Yeah. Uh, any hopes of getting rid of uh, GTK two or GConf this cycle? Well, bank mm. on the CD. Right. Yeah. Because any any hopes of reducing? So, I got the list. Uh, <coughs> Where? That's I have more sodas after the one. Oh, wow. I don't even get that's four. Oh, Riot. No. It's oh, not yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> that's not you anymore. Yeah. Ram <laughs> Sajuku. Compass. Okay, that's going to get cleaned up. Um, Evolution do server, so that's going to get cleaned up. Firefox. Yeah. Evolution data server is not going to move this cycle. Yeah, so, so you got to. No games! <laughs> has to be. She needs to push the patches. Oh, ah, really? And then we'll have it with. Uh, network so Manager it's... applet? How do you use that? Which one? Network Manager Yeah, so the answer applet. is basically no chance. Yeah, no okay. chance. For either of them. <clears throat> yeah, that's gconf and gtk is there. Well, maybe in like plus one. 
Yeah, maybe on plus one. Okay, because then we can like, like do some crazy gnome syncing up again. Yeah. <laughs> we did, um, yeah, we did, but there's still like the difficult yeah. ones remaining. It's still a big list. So, so Firefox uh, is currently working on a GTK free port. Um, and there is a bug open about it with like several patches, but it's been like that for a while. Um, so I'm really uncertain about when it's going to land. And I think say, uh, Chris said like he doesn't want to use it before it lands upstream because he said we'll go. Oh no 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 no! No, no, no I'm, I'm more curious actually like uh, when it's going to land upstream upstream because like. A bunch of the patches are reviewed, but it's yeah, but touching a lot of things. Yeah, and Chris said it's blocked until you get to Flash working on GTK3, because otherwise you get like mismatch of versions. So no flash. Hey, you can say like fuck Flash. <laughs> I mean, like it worked for other operating system vendors. So. <laughs> uh, Sad but true. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <coughs> yep. Let's figure out the latest version. It's generally been improved. Oh, for, uh, for yes. the love of God, can you like get rid of the packages called Geconf and Epiphany? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Talk to Debian. It's coming from Debian. I'm talking to Debian. You're a DD. Yeah, but I'm not the maintainer for those. <laughs> Is there a maintainer for these back? <coughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you do like a, like a non-maintainer anti-upload? <laughs> <laughs> I joke aside, I will try to talk to the Debian guys about like running the name at least, like Epiphany Game or something. Yeah. And Dconf, like, same things, like doing Dconf. thing that nobody uses. Yeah. <laughs> right. What version of Epiphany are you getting? Hmm? What version of the Epiphany are you getting? 3.4, I guess. It's not on the CD, so... No, 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 so it doesn't, yeah. Like, like clever. I think Not yet. The or the or <laughs> what about like Yelp? Yeah, the latest Yeah, because it's been, and it's probably a, a likely adopter of the menu model mm -hmm. stuff as well. Yeah, so if we, if we can do that, we should. Do. Yeah, it's a Yelp would be a good choice. Yeah, I put it with like a long like builder. Events is like another possible okay one. I need to check like with the popular mm. cycles yeah. seems to be. Mm. Not really reliable, and so if popular gets late and yeah, uh, even depends on the new version, I will check the upstream. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, what about a GNOME terminal and the VTE thing? Yeah. Um, what is that? What about it? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we we wanted to keep uh, VTE two point. Two eight for the GTK two support or something? Yeah, I think like, I remember talking to Martin about that because I put a patch into the VTE package, which is not sort of upstream. It's a combination of upstream patch and a patch written by one of the accessibility developers because of the GTK refactor. Um, VTE accessibility support broke, uh, and then I remember talking to Martin about VTE versions and he said, "Well, we as long as we need the, uh, the VTE compatible with uh, for GTK two, we'll have to stick with the latest version that supports GTK two as well." So, which, which doesn't probably include me carrying one or, one or more patches. What what needs VTE GTK2? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Let me go look. Oh, it could have been um, slash quit. The software installer. <laughs> you, you installed oh, different you packages. It has to be. Sorry. Might have been using Python VTE instead of the older version. Okay. Does anyone know if that's changed? Um, Let me. Yeah, now, that, now that you mention it, um, well, we still, there's still stuff in the universe that uses GTK2 VTE, I think. 
Oh, it's certainly would be some crazy. Stack and burger. So you also look at this Python VT again. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's still quite some stuff. Yeah, that's, that's quite Synap a bit. Synaptic. <coughs> Lamina, which is my big change in this side. Ne never heard of it, really, okay. Well, we, we have to break a lot of things out. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but maybe we can get like, the new version and keep the old source for GTK2. Like. Mm. It's the sort of thing that if it's not going to give us much value, you yeah. probably won't well, we'd follow what Debian would do, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Do you ship Shot by default? What? Mm -hmm. Shot Yeah. What are you going to do with that? Getting the new version? Hopefully, it doesn't depend on too many things. Uh, they're, they're pretty um, oh, they conservative. Yeah, they always the want kind. like to be running on at least the two previous Ubuntu version. Like they didn't go for the new GTK this cycle because mm. they said like they want the same version to be running like across the board. Yeah, he, um, Jim was showing me he has like a GTK application mock class that he's using. Yeah, just because they want to use it, but they don't want to depend on it. Mm. So uh, answering KS Cloud's question. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to stay with GNOME 3.2, and some apps will get 3.4 if we get the new GTK. Um, but universe apps like GNOME Shell, we might, those also would probably get the 3.4 with the new GTK. Hmm. And yes, Totem has to stay on 3.0 for now. Is that whole ugly, like, um, Mozilla JavaScript engine thing solved once and for all? Like, it got spun off into a separate package and like, everything's okay now? Which one? The thing where, like, you couldn't, G like, GJS. run the new shell because it depended on, like, a GJS that was tied to a Firefox <coughs> version. Oh, yeah, we have a standalone, like, GJS. Okay. So I guess you just upgrade that to whatever yeah. the shell means. Yeah. And um, Firefox is updating as well. Yeah. Do you know bug number for the administration preferences? Uh, you no. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could check the you known panel bugs. Um, what is it? It, it has to do with the desktop files and if settings is in there. I, I've not really looked at that in detail. But is that like in GNOME Shell only? Uh, no. Go, GNOME, well, I think it's GNOME Fallback is where the bug is. <laughs> um, there's some questions about you know, when they got rid of the main settings menu and yeah. I think some stuff we do specifically in Unity, I, I don't know. Okay. Ah, a beautiful sea of green. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to see. I love this page, it's really, really cool. <laughs> what is it? Like it's like telling them like the version of GNOME package they have in the distro versus upstream versus Debian. Debian. Oh. Upstream. Oh. Oh. And everything that is green is uh, yeah. can we also tie it in everything for yeah, perfect. Oh, okay. Good, yeah. All right. And we can so. also tie it in with the PPA, too. You see at the top, we have a split version, like for GLib. Uh. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. That's yeah. how we get the GNOME 3 PPA. Uh, and you get the module requests yeah. uh, yeah. uh -huh. Hey, precise one. Nice. <laughs> uh. So, Ryan, do you know if we're... Um, no, there has, hasn't been any proposal to make the uh, session use systemd or anything like that, right? Not that I know of. No. Might happen later in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't think it's subtle and at all. It's just... Oh, I, I think it's subtle. I think we're just sort of being conservative at first. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. The idea. definitely. I think we are mostly done. Anything else you wanted to bring? Okay, thanks. Thank you. <coughs>